Welcome back to a special episode of Jamin's Daily at Daniel Gonzalez, lawyer extraordinaire, renaissance man, and host to UFC 271. You may hear it in the background. Thank you, Daniel, for being a gracious host and welcome to back on the show. Yeah, man, happy to be here. Uh, um, yeah, so we look in the camera. I don't know. We, you, you, I don't know what to do. Where do I look? You look at you. We're not looking. You're right. No, look at, at look, look 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 at the little. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. I think that's what's yeah, gonna yeah. work. Okay. I think that's where right. that's at. Got it. You know, you're right? Because I was looking at this other camera. Yeah. Yeah. There's another camera. There's, there's two cameras. There's multiple cameras. And, I, and then the other thing is, we're hearing. I'm hearing myself in the earphones. That I'm hearing you. Through the earphones, I guess, as well. But then we have background noise. But yeah, it, this is not. Oh, that's what it is. We're here in the. We're here in the UFC. Yeah, the we're we're like real broadcasters, though. You have to make it work because yeah. the the people there at ringside who are calling it, they're probably in the same situation. There's lots of noise, and they just gotta make it work. That's right. Yeah, lots going on, uh, but we'll get through. It. We'll get through. It. We'll get we'll get, uh, we'll get all uh, all synced in. Beautiful. Let's talk about something that most people can relate to, and we just had um, sticker shock with. You you ordered some pizza, yeah, and I asked you how much it was, mm -hmm. and when you told me, I had a hard time believing it. Yeah, I yeah yeah uh, the pizza. Well, you always hear about inflation that's going on, and um, I haven't really had that much interaction with it uh -huh. i haven't really felt you hadn't felt, felt it. it yeah but when i ordered this pizza i mean i ordered a, it's papa john's i ordered a regular uh pepperoni pizza that was fine it was 13 dollars. That, that sounded a little high but reasonable reasonable but then i my wife wanted a hawaiian with the pepper with, with the, maybe this was oh well, no it wasn't it but with the pineapples and the canadian bacon and it was twenty dollars Twenty dollars for a single large pizza, so that yeah that was, and then the uh, wings so the wings were another twenty dollars. The wings is what expensive. Yeah, well, well, I got sixteen wings and um, yeah, I guess that's what. Damn, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna take a little doggy bag home. Yeah, yeah, that that was, and I don't know, is that inflation? I mean, the wings it definitely. So so the total came out to around sixty dollars for two pizzas and a it's wings set of wings. Yeah, seems high. Yeah, seems high. I, I don't remember paying that much for a pizza. Even you know when I went, was scrolling through it and uh, going through the order, the twenty dollars for the Hawaiian was hard to handle. That was hard, that was, that was tough. To handle. That's the kind of, you know I've only spent that much maybe at B and J's, like for specialty pizza, big right. You know, right. but yeah, that's more expect, like that's like gourmet. That much, yeah. That's gourmet stuff. Yeah. You know, you're ordering franchise pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, exactly. You expect to pay not very much, but, but you know what? But an interesting thing about what happened when that when I ordered that pizza, the delivery guy, the delivery guy. I, so my doorbell doesn't really work. We don't hear it, but uh, so maybe he was upset. Maybe he was frustrated. I don't. I don't know what was going on. But he knocked on our door a little aggressively. I thought it was a little aggressive. Did you, what, did it you, was loud. I heard it. Yeah. I heard it, it very well. It was a little aggressive. So, but then I went to the door to open it. Big guy. Oh, wait, something's shaking. Yeah. That's all good. I fixed it. Well, you, when, you, 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 when you moved it. Oh, when I moved the table. Yeah, you're moving the table. So it's, relax. <laughs> I didn't okay. think so. So, not... so when, okay, okay, so. Okay, okay. So, I, so he knocks on the door you know, a little aggressively. And I go to the door. And the guy, if I, because if, if the door was closed, he literally must have had the door. <laughs> Two inches in front of his yes. face. It was like you open it and boom, he's right he there. Was there. Ah. Okay. okay, yes, yes. So then he forgets the Pepsi that we ordered, right? So he has to go back to the store, come back and get it. He, he you know, he doesn't seem super happy about his job. He doesn't seem like he's, you know, aggressively mad about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, he comes back, boom, same knock, uh, happens on the door. And he's even closer to the door. When I, I open the door, and he's literally the door. He must have had his nose on the door. On the door, 
because I open it, boom, he's there. I don't know if he's trying to get a reaction or that's, it, it's definitely, he knows for sure, 100%. You can close. see it in his eyes. He wants you to say something to him. And I didn't engage with him, but it was, you know, what are you going to do? What, what would you do in that situation? I mean, what do you do? When I knock on people's door, I knock on their door and then I take like three steps back. That's what you usually expect from pizza people too, <laughs> especially lately. They, they knock on the door and they're like at, past the first, you know, yeah. concrete barrier or whatever. So, they're, they're like in the, already on the like the walkway, the pathway out almost. Yeah, they're not even yeah. in your no, you open entryway. This door and this dude's 6'5. Yeah. He was that big? I'm about 6'5. Six, 6'something. Six yeah. 6'something. Okay. And, and a solid 300. Solid okay. Here. I mean, you're a big guy. And he's just right there. And, and who, you know, if like a little girl or a young person, a young person open the door they'd be like yeah you you think he does that because of the ring the the door cam the door camera the closer he won't, be seen. he won't be as seen as much if you get close to the door it it definitely no because the doesn't... ring camera is pretty wild I mean, yeah. it, it covers the whole okay whole spectrum, so. i don't know he, he's probably just a little strange i mean yeah but I, I wonder, I wonder what, you know, if he gets, if they get feedback, because like, you mm -hmm. think about it, you know, it stays in your mind. Like, what should I have done in this situation? How often does he do this? It, was he, was he upset for some yeah. reason? Uh, obviously, maybe he realized when he forgot the Pepsi, he was already upset in the first time. And then the second, because he was, you had to have seen his face. He was wanting a confrontation. In my opinion. Like, you, you, was he expecting for you to say, don't worry about it? Don't worry about it. No. Oh, about you the know Pepsi? about the about the Pepsi? Oh. Like, oh man, don't worry about it. Oh no, no. no. Who would expect that? You no, just paid for it and no. you didn't bring it. Go get no, it. Not, that's like a sl small chance somebody's gonna say no. Yeah. After spending sixty dollars on pizza. Exactly. Yeah. But I but I had uh, another topic I wanted to bring up. It's hot, please, it's hot on hot please on please do my please, mind, please do. And I want to get your take on it first. All right, here it comes. We are in a situation, and it depends on who you listen to. I really don't. I don't watch any mainstream news at this point. Yeah, and I don't hear about it much uh, on any other sources that I listen to. All I hear is just snippets here and there. But there's a obviously a, a, a serious, potentially serious situation that we're getting involved with in the Ukraine. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let me get just your uh, let me get your opinion on what is happening. And what should be done about it if there's anything that needs to be done? Okay. If if I know this topic well enough, uh, I believe one of the major sticking points within Russia and Ukraine is <coughs> the Ukraine is a former Soviet satellite. Okay. He was part of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union collapsed, they were one of several independent countries that were formed. But the thing is, unlike some of the other former Soviet states that are have stayed within the Russian sphere of influence, uh, Ukraine has a strong nationalist um, sentiment amongst mm -hmm. the citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay, they do not consider themselves to be Russian. They don't want to be Soviets. They don't want to be Russian. They they are very proud of their Ukrainian uh, nationalism. Now. In, I think it's maybe the northeast, along the border of Russia, there is a, separate, a separatist movement amongst ethnic Russians who live in Ukraine. And they want their own self-determination in their own country outside of Ukraine. Okay? And so they've been fighting a war with the, the U Ukrainian government. And of course, Russia is giving them weapons and material to fight this war. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the biggest sticking points as well is with Putin, at least, is that Ukraine is, they're not formally associated or a member of NATO, but they're some kind of like junior member or something like this. Mm -hmm. And Putin has said that's like a red line. Like our former satellites that border our country cannot, NATO was created to confront and oppose Russia. And now you're going to turn one of our our former Soviet satellites into basically, I don't want to say an enemy, but the opposition right there on our border. And so these are 
I guess the provocations for Russia, maybe to, you know, the the, the rumors of war. Do you think that there's gonna gonna be a confrontation? I, I do think that it's you know, and this is you know all you know speculation, of course, but. I do feel like there could be a um, a partnership or a wink and a nod between Russia and China, because I do feel China is just clamoring and looking for a reason to go into Taiwan, and I do feel like as though uh, what's his name, Ping or Jinping, Ping, Z Jinping, the Russia, the the Chinese premier, he. I think him and Putin could wink at each other and say, listen, you go over there, I'm going over here. And they can't, they're going to sanction both of us. But I think Putin's going to be, be able, the, the, the past that Putin's going to have is going to be like, look, he did it too. You know, or they're doing it too. And the, we can't sanction China. The world can't sanction China like they can sanction Russia. Because they're going to be like, okay, sanction us, but then, you know, your Advil and your Tylenol and everything you buy at Walmart is just going to be 10 times more. Yeah, so you think there's some sort of collaboration or at least some sort of coordination between China and Russia? Yes. I, if, they, if, there isn't, yeah. if there isn't, I think they'd be foolish not to. Yeah, that definitely seems... I mean, they had a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and, and that definitely seems like a possibility. So what I know about it... and the opinions I'm forming and getting and the information I'm getting is basically all from uh, another podcast called the all in podcast with some, uh, some, you know, Chamath, Pali Hapatia and uh, David Sachs or some billionaire tech, tech, Got it. techies uh, that, that run hedge fund, they run funds uh, that invest around the world and, and, and do all this. So that's what I just starting now. I don't know what's going on in Ukraine or, and from what I understand, not many people do. Yeah. And I don't Putin think is right. kind of inclined to flex his muscles and, you know, like he did with Georgia, maybe 10, mm -hmm. 10 15 years ago. The uh, Crimea, they annexed the they Crimea. They annexed the Crimea. But what, from what I understand, at least this is the, the, the information I'm getting secondhand, is that Putin obviously has a vested interest in keeping his fear of influence in his sphere of influence, you know, if if those, all those Eastern European countries start revolting or start defecting to the United Nations, then they're basically putting the West in his you know backyard. Mm -hmm. So he, he, we might be thinking, you know, as Americans, this is just Putin being aggressive, but from what I understand, it is almost a provocation from from the West to continue to try to put Ukraine into our pocket. In other words, would we accept, as Americans, would we accept a uh, communist country... Cuba, Cuba... To put Cuba, Cuba. To, to put Cuba in their back pocket. No, no, Cuba, in other it, words, it, the, no. yeah, we would not allow that to happen. And we have not allowed that to happen. Or would we allow, um, you know, the, uh, Canada or Mexico uh, to become a communist sure. country? Mm -hmm. that, that's going to be siding with Russia and China Correct. at all point. And so obviously, no, we wouldn't let that happen. So we, I think we're seeing this uh, from an American lens as opposed to seeing it from you know, the East mm -hmm. uh, or, or from a Russian lens saying, listen, we control this area of the world. This is our, this is our territory. Don't come into our territory and, and try to influence it, and we're not going to let it happen. And will he actually invade? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's unlikely. But I know that, you know, just from personal experience, that that my own cousin has been put on, you know, high, he's in the army, yeah. he's been put on high alert. He's saying, they're saying, you can be deployed at any time, have your bags next to your bed and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And they've all, you know, obviously, I think we've put 6,000, deployed, you know, deployed 6,000 plus troops over there at this point. There was, there were headlines. And then, and then let me just, let me, yeah, oh, go, go, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, there was headlines on the internet that you, how you had said um, service members need to be on standby, but there are already an estimated several thousand, you know, operators yeah. and people there already. And 
apparently many of them are being, um, I don't know what the right military word would be, but let's say repositioned mm -hmm. because the concern is that they're in harm's way. And so we need to maybe not evacuate, but they're repositioning them because of the fear of um, the invasion or, or um, uh, you know, actual strikes or some type of kinetic um, events that are going to happen. And if they're there, they may not be the target, but they could become victims, right? Mm -hmm. Or be in the uh, collateral damage. Mm -hmm. So we need a move because that would be the worst thing that could happen. Because if Americans get killed while they're there, even if they're not the targets, then it becomes a, 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 a big issue, right? Well, that, that actually leads into exactly the point that I was going to say to you next or we'll talk about next, which, which is that uh, Biden mm -hmm. had an interview with Lester Holt. I didn't watch. I didn't watch the interview, but I saw a clip of it, uh, in which Lester Holt asks him, you know, what happens if Americans are killed or you know, engaged, and then Biden, you know, he says, "Well, that's World War Three. You know, that's what's happening." And that's just the no. what is what kind of, I mean, what is he thinking about talking? Mean, I get it. Yeah, that's what people think in the back of their minds. But as a president and a leader of a free world, I mean, you got to be more diplomatic than that, right? I mean, no. you got you got to say, well, we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate our options. You know, we'll 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 respond in kind. We'll do this, that, or the other. But then he goes, you know, from zero to a hundred. E, that's great, great description there. Yes, yes. No, I, I think the the, be the better thing for him to have done, the bigger, I think the the stronger response would have been. That's that. That's not going to happen. E even right, though it could, gotta, even yeah, though it could, yeah, you, you deflect it and say that that's not going. That's not going to happen. We won't let that happen. Right. And I mean, it, we all know it still could, but he he has to say like that's not going to happen. But it, I mean, could it really though? I mean, no, I, I don't even think it could. To be honest, um, we we've I mean, killed Russians. We've killed Russians in Syria. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't go to world. There wasn't a World War Three. Yeah, we had troops killed by Iran. And we haven't in Iraq. Oh, yes, yes. We, we haven't gone into World War Three. I mean, it's such a non-nuanced, imbecilic response to the question. Yes, World War Three. Like he even understands what that would mean or what that would involve. Like it, it just is. It, it's just ridiculous. But the reason I think it doesn't, it isn't possible, is because you have Russia, right? Obviously, you know, a diminished economic and military power compared to the United States, but, but they, are, they are in that area of the world where they're connected to China, and China is obviously uh, a rising power, mm -hmm. if, not, you know, if not more. Than, I mean, they're an established power, but they continue to rise. Mm -hmm. And our infrastructure, our medicine, like you were saying, Everything that we do depends on China yes. to a large degree. And until we become self-sufficient, as we realize we were not during the pandemic, mm -hmm. there's nothing that we can do to shut off the U.S.-China relationship in a negative way. I mean, when they invite, invade Taiwan, and they will, we can't do anything about that. There's nothing we can do. We can't send troops. We can't. We, we, we try to contain the problem of them taking over the South China Sea in an aggressive manner, but they're going to take over the South China Sea and it's going to be completely there uh, within a, a decade or two. Uh, so there's nothing we can do about Taiwan. If, if we engage with Russia, it may be a regional conflict that we have to you know come to a stalemate in Ukraine, but I don't think that's going to happen. But if there were battles, China's not going to, China and the United States are not going to fully engage directly, because yeah. too, but it can, because it's too. These wars will always be bad. by proxy. The the, the, yeah. the war between the United States and China, and even with Russia as well, it's all through proxy. And Ukraine it provides a a uh, a perfect s storm for that. Just like um, our our war with Iran, we're not technically technically at war with Iran. But in Syria, 
you know, we're fighting all I- Iran in many cases. In, in Iraq, we're fighting Iran and, and their Revolutionary Corps, but not directly. It's all mm-hmm. indirectly it's through proxies, through Hezbollah, it's through other Islamic groups. And in this situation, when it comes to Ukraine, we're going to be fighting Russia through through Ukrainian through the Ukrainian government. We're going to be funding them. We're going to be sending what they call like military uh, uh, advisors. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll send all these advisors. You know, there's going to be uh, oper- special forces there embedded here and there that you don't even hear about. Uh, and that's how you, we're going to be fighting these wars forever, whether it's in Ukraine or Taiwan. We just have to hope especially when it comes to Taiwan, that um, it's just so painful. I mean, I think we give China a little bit too much credit in in this whole thought that they're going to be able to just occupy Taiwan with overwhelming force. They will, but it's going to be a huge expense. They're going to spend lots of blood and treasure in order to make that happen. And in a communist country where you don't have the the the, the people, um, you don't have to worry about them, you know, like some Vietnam situation where people protesting all anti-war stuff, you know, uh, you can. You can take the losses. You can lose the blood and treasure in order to m- meet your goal. Mm. But I do not believe that the, the, the Taiwanese are heavily nationalistic. They do not want to be part of China. And they may lose, they may, just like when it came to Vietnam, they may lose every single battle that they are in, but they will ultimately win the war. But I, I, I see that differently. I don't want to, we can talk about this, but I think there's a bigger point. But it's an island. You know? All China's got to do is post up yeah. a few. Oh, the blockade, yes. Yeah, yeah post up a few. They could blockade. Uh, they could do yeah, that economic, yeah, yeah. And it's That's, over. That, that is. Talking, it's a, it take them. 48 hours to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to to stop all goods and services coming in and out of that country. Sure. And then you just have, you know, a servitude of, of sorts coming from that country. There, there's, I, I see what you're saying in that if you're going to occupy and you're going to have a peaceful coexistence, yeah, that's going to take time, a generation or two. I don't think there will be. I think there'll be a massive insurgency forever, just like there was in Afghanistan, just like there was in a yeah. lo- for a long time in but, Iraq. But I think that's because you. I think you're having the, the different, the wrong uh, frame for that for that uh, for that view. Because Afghanistan and Iraq are mountainous; they're large, mm-hmm. uh, they're few in resources, but the people who live there for Thousands of sure. years, uh, you know, know every nook and cranny of those countries, it, and so it's hard to to, to cut off those people and, and, and uh, subjugate them. Yeah. But with a small, you know, we're not talking about like Cuba would be difficult, but Cuba's also an island. We could blockade. We, we have set up a blockade and, and shut the whole island no, down. We have for I mean, there's, after years. after you know fourteen days. There's going to be people swimming out to the boats to try to get supplies. So. And Taiwan's a much smaller island than, than Cuba, I think. And I think Taiwan is bigger than Cuba. Is it really? Yeah, it's a pretty large nation. Oh, that that surprised me because Cuba's pretty, pretty big. Is it? That's that's funny. If folks, if you know at home, send me an email at jamesdaily at gmail.com or like and share and comment. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the thing. How many how many Chinese nationals in the PLA, in the People's Liberation Army, how many Chinese nationals do you think have ever placed foot in Taiwan. Do you think the PLA is, uh, you know, the People's Liberation Army is, and the average foot soldier in that army is familiar with the Taiwanese topography and the, this and yeah, that? they don't need to be. They just need to, uh, that, that, that's what I'm saying. They don't need to be. China controls the South China Sea. All the, and, and, and the, I don't even know if Taiwan is in the South China Sea. There are literally... Right I don't know how many miles. I don't, I don't know, know if it's 90 miles. miles, 100 miles. But they can just surround it like an old school siege. Yes. Right? Yes. And and it's over. It's over. It's there's there's awesome. nothing. That, then, you know, you, you put your troops in there. And whether there's insurgency after that or not, I don't think there would be because those people realize that they can be starved out in a matter of mm-hmm. days, you know, as opposed to Iraq or Afghanistan. But... What's That's interesting there. I think, what's interesting yeah. is this is that unlike again when we're when we're the contrast here 
with, uh, like I said, like Vietnam and, and Afghanistan in terms of insurgencies and even Iraq, is that these were these were third world poor countries, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Taiwan is a developing first world country. And to me, the, the bigger, um, the reason why the Afghanis, they don't want to modernize in terms of the insurgency. You know, they, they want something. Uh, they, they're happy with the way they, they live and, and their traditions and norms, right? The, the, the Taiwanese, because they're further, you know, you're talking about really sacrificing. You know, the Afghani in the village, what is he sacrificing? He already lives in a mud hut with no AC, no running water, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you're a, a, a citizen in Taiwan who's got a good job and you have, you live in a first world city and now it's like, really, do I want to be part of an insurgency and give up, you know, hey, maybe I will just let China come in. We may lose our freedoms in terms of freedom of speech, all this other mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, the lights will stay on. My job will still be there. I can still drive my car to work. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can't get on the Internet anymore whenever I want. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, are they willing to sacrifice? Because I think the more you become, um, the more first world, the more luxuries you have in this life, the less willing you're able or more, the less willing you are to to be part of an insurgency and die for a cause or live in a, um, you know, these insurgents live in, you know, in hiding, living terribly in order to, to defeat your enemy. And, and to think about the insurgency and insurgency is never meant to win. It's meant to outlast. Yeah. We're going to be here and, and until the, until we all die, we're never going to give up. Yeah. And that takes a long time. And if somebody like take this, if someone could probably do it because of they don't have the 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 ham uh, the criticism. I'm trying to worse the ham. They're not they're not hum, hamstrung like Western countries are in terms of you know human rights, in terms of uh, a portion uh, a portionate proportionate power, use of power, mm -hmm. you know, because they can we could go defeat all our enemies in a day by just raining bombs. But mm -hmm. that's not proportionate, right? Mm -hmm. You think you think in our country, if we went and we did that, there'd be a hell to pay, you know, commentators all over the world, you know, anti war it would be a huge deal. Right. That that just will not happen in China. China could go in and just probably create, you know, conduct all kinds of war crimes in order to win a war, uh, and they don't have to worry about all the um, the criticism and, and the things that make it uh, hard to win wars at home because they're censored. You don't have freedom of speech. Yeah, that, I mean that, that that's a good point. Probably, well. well Really their hands are not tied. Literally, their hands are not tied by yeah, their but people. I'm, but I'm thinking about it in, in, in the opposite direction that, that you were talking about at first, which is that as a, de as a developed country with the luxuries that, that they enjoy, are they less likely to you know, uh, maintain an insurgency against an occupying power? Uh, which is an interesting question. I'm not sure. I mean, that, that's interesting. I mean, because if you look at the... Afghani and the Iraqi insurgencies. I mean, obviously, there's a large religious component yes. to that, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if there is. That is a key component that you're bringing up. Yes, exactly. So, so obviously, I don't know if ta what time Taiwan's you know religious. It's it's not a religious war. It's not it's not a jihad. I mean, it's a national. Jihad, it's a nationalism. It's nationalism, right? So uh, that's different, and. It's not an existential. Can it's not you be an existential thing? Whereas I need to, I need to destroy these invaders to save my soul. Yeah. Yes, and or influence the world. It's just I'm trying to live my life. Can and, you be? And what's can the can best, safest way to do that? Can um, <coughs> can can somebody be as can can your opposition to something be as uh, fervent or as as heightened? Based off of nationalism as opposed to, uh, you know, re religious motives, can you be just as willing to die in terms of nationalism? Because I, I feel like that's how where the Chinese are. The Chinese are a very secular um, population, mm -hmm. uh, and so and in, in their culture, 
and again, folks, we're, we're generalizing. Okay, uh, their whole their whole purpose for for taking over Taiwan is not because oh they're Taiwanese or some other religion. It's because they have a one China doctrine. And we can't allow for Taiwan to be, because I don't understand, why couldn't Taiwan be its own country? We can be great trading partners. We can continue to make money. We Y'all have had self-rule for 50 years already. So I, I don't even see the need to even do it. Yeah, I don't know the first thing about the history of, of Taiwan and China and why they need to, to own it, but I know that... Uh, China, in every aspect of their society, and I know some per, of some personal examples, will you will get in trouble, you know, whether you're, you know, a school teacher or a market, you know, a person in the market, and you're, and you somehow maybe you show a map of China, uh -huh. and Taiwan is not included in that. Sure. You yes. Know. Yes. You and those things are monitored very closely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you better not no, do yeah. that in I, China. Yeah, I would imagine. But I don't know why. It, it's. I it does. I think it does. It's from the genesis of the whole um, of the whole separation. Because I do believe. I think what what had happened was prior to Mao. I think this happened after World War Two. Can't remember the leader's name, but there was the ex um, expatriate people left. A certain bourgeoisie left China during these cultural changes and really a bigger push towards um, um, socialism and communism. All the well-to-do, the bourgeoisie left and fled to Taiwan during, cultural during that during that time. And that's why that's one reason why Taiwan has been very um, successful in the market. And they have the entrepre entrepreneurial uh, people. They, they create a lot of goods and they have a, a good economy because... The people who left fled China were of that mindset, just like you see in South Florida. Many of the expatriates who fled Cuba during the um, their communist revolution moved to 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 South Florida, and many of these people were also the bourgeoisie, the the business owners who all of a sudden found themselves in the in the crosshairs. They fled and they set up shop and became business leaders in Florida. You know, so you see that in Taiwan, but. You know, here's the deal. It's not the it's not those people who fled to Taiwan who are going to be fighting the war. It's going to be their grandchildren who grow, who've grown up with this easy life. Mm -hmm. And are they going to be the ones willing to sacrifice? Because mm -hmm. they're the ones who are going to fight fight the war. It's an interesting question uh, whether Taiwan is going to put up a fight mm -hmm. for a decade or or two decades or you know however long it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they have the ability to, to last that long, but, but, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I know the NBA can't stand up to China. You know, no, sure. or no, Hollywood can't stand no, up to China. No, no, no. Uh, not, not in the least. Um, so we'll see, but I think the, well, the main part is about to start, but I want before we go, let's make a prediction on tomorrow's Super Bowl. All right. All right. Let's go. Let me, I'll, I'll, let me start. So we have in, the Super Bowl. What Super Bowl number is this? Fifty what? There's so many now. It's hard to know. And the, what's funny is in the build up to the Super Bowl, you don't even hear the stress on the number anymore. Like nobody says, "Oh, it's Super Bowl thirty something or Super Bowl fifty right. something." Well, it's it's just Super Bowl. It's a way. It's a decade. You know, when it's like Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is it the sixty yeah. yet? No, it's not it's sixty. Not it's fifty yet. something right now. It's fifty something for sure. Uh, we have the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Los Angeles. Rams or the LA Rams mm. and in LA and it's in LA. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they're going to have some home field advantage possibly. Uh, we all, you know, the thing about the Super Bowl is that there's no home field advantage because only you have to be, there's nothing but super, you got to have a lot of money. They were showing uh, the tickets. Mm -hmm. I think it was, uh, who was it? Ocho Cinco, Chad Ocho Cinco. You remember Chad Johnson? Yeah, yeah. He put up a tweet about the available tickets and it, it, he i don't know if it was on Ticketmaster or something and it showed all of them and i mean nosebleeds were like four thousand dollars yeah and we're I talking about the crappiest seats in the house yeah the, according to according to my source dave ramsey the average uh, price of a ticket is eight thousand dollars oh geez that's retarded 
Okay. It might, it might have been somebody else. Uh, else. But do you have a preference? Do you, do you are you do you know do you have somebody who want to, who you want to win? You know the, the the what I what I am grateful for is that the divisional and the conference uh games mm-hmm. championships were so good yes yes it, now the super bowl i don't really care you know these these both these teams i think were unex- were not favorites to 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 agree maybe the rams were no they were both uh, i think uh, they're definitely not the- i think they're the fourth and fifth seeded teams yeah. in their yeah. in their conferences right um uh, but it was entertaining great Oh, it's going to be hard I mean, to live up to multiple overtime games, game. multiple like last second mm-hmm. games. It almost makes you think like what? No, it's going to be a letdown. Of... They, it, this game cannot um, no. live up to the two conference, the AFC and NFC conference games or uh, from two weeks games. ago, and they've all been really and good. The wild card games. It's been great for the. It's been great for the the NFL. I, I do like the more the in the United States and especially in Texas, man. I mean. You can't get enough football. I mean, if they're going to play more football game, more playoff games, I'm I'm going to watch it. You know, when, on the college yeah. football, they expand the playoffs. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. You know, I just, it's going to be hard. It gets oversaturated, I guess maybe, but I can't. I don't see it yet. Yeah. Um, I think those. I think really. I mean, obviously the Super Bowl. If it's your team, it's the biggest game, best game of the year. Mm-hmm. But if it's not, <clears throat> it's just a I party. Really, it's just a party yeah. with the extended halftime and all the shenanigans. It's not that enjoyable to watch. I mean, it's, it's good to have the party, but the the games to watch, I think, are the the playoff games, the real mm-hmm. playoff mm-hmm. games. Those are the like do it. I mean, obviously the Super Bowl is too, but it's just a little too. Well, like, the Super too Bowl, I, the Super Bowl has lost so much. I remember growing up as a teenager, mm-hmm. when we watch, we have Super Bowl parties, and the commercials were such a big deal, right. and they 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 still are to a degree, but they are all terrible now because companies are so afraid to be funny they're, woke. they're so woke. everything's gone so woke that the the commercials are not funny anymore you can't make a joke without offending somebody so now every super bowl commercial is some like uplifting kumbaya bull crap that you know it's not funny i'm not entertained this is not entertaining scene you know, Wells Fargo talk about how, oh, we're, we're doing this and, oh, we're all one people. You know, I, yeah. I want to see a Bud Light commercial with horses and a dog yeah. making some kind of joke. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want to see. I want to see some little baby slapping some grown man, telling him to keep his hands off his Doritos and, yeah. and off his mother. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is what I want to see. That, in the last couple years, yeah, in the last couple of years, you, the, the commercials have been terrible, terrible. So maybe I'm hoping there'll be maybe a little bit of a pen, pendulum. What is pendulum no, swing? It's coming no, back. Not yet. Not no, yet. no. Still, you not think we're still gonna get a bunch of woke not commercials? Pursuing. That's sad. Pursuing. That's sad. Well, here my prediction is this: I'm gonna go with the LA Rams based off of defense. I think they're going to get after Joe Burrow. He's going to have a hard time, um, you know, finding his receiver. He's going to be able to pressure. And I think the Rams are going to win uh, because of defense. I do think it'll be a close game because I, even though I like the quarterback, uh, Matthew Stafford, he's a Texan from Dallas. And he, he played for the Detroit Lions for a long time, suffered, you know, playing for a, a, a bad organization. Yeah. Uh, they traded him to the Rams. The Rams went all in. They went. They got him. They got uh, Odell Beckham. They got Von Miller. Okay, uh, it's it's Super Bowl or bust for them. The the Cincinnati Bengals are just happy to be there. Mm-hmm. The, the Cincinnati Independent School Districts gave the, the school is off. They they Good. they canceled school tomorrow. Good. Which is a, a great a great decision. Tomorrow Sunday, but you mean, well, I Monday. mean, well, yeah, Monday, yeah, Monday school is yeah. closed. So okay, for the schools in Cincinnati, it great that superintendent deserves uh, a pat on the back yeah. because it's not the kids' fault that they didn't make it to school. Okay, because their parents <laughs> hung over. Yeah. All right, yeah. so you you cancel school, and I think the it's going to be a close game because I do think even though I like Matthew Stafford, he's kind of a gunslinger. Yeah. I feel like he's going to keep the game close because he's going to throw some interceptions and that's going to help maybe stall some drives maybe and, and keep Cincinnati in it. But I do feel like I want to go with the LA Rams 28 
to 17. I'm going with the LA Rams as well. Matt Stafford, uh, for sure. I also like the coach. What's the coach name for the Rams? For the Rams, uh, Sean, Sean, Sean McVay. McVay. Yeah, Sean McVay. I like Dude, him. we're older than he is. You yeah, know that, yeah. right? He's like, what, 36? He's like 36 years old. Yeah, yeah. And he's been the head coach for a couple of years now. Yeah. So he got that job when he was like 33, well, 34. He's way smarter than this. Yeah, and he got in early too. Yeah. Okay, so LA Rams, uh, I'll go 35-21. 3521. 3521. Okay. Alright. You heard it here on Jamin's Daily. Stick with us. You know why? Because the best is yet to come.